I'll be recapping a Chinese ciencia drama called Till the End of the Moon. The drama starts with the demon god massacring the realms, looking for the immortal item past mirror that can kill him. An immortal student, Susu, is waiting for her father and uncle to return from the war. Her sect brother, Ji Wu, leaks to her that they may not be able to kill this demon god because they don't know his history and the gods are extinct. The demon god has found the immortal item and is forcing Susu's uncle to open it, since his demon power can't. Right before killing Susu's uncle and father, Susu shows up and grazes his face. In the ensuing scuffle, the uncle stealthily takes the immortal item and throws it to Susu. Demon God grabs her neck and when her forehead flickers he startled and releases her. Some of her blood drops on the immortal item and she's transported into it. The past mirror shows her that 500 years ago, Demon God was a mere mortal called Tan Tai Jin. All the bullying and hate he received led him to submit to the dark side, turning him into the Demon God. And that she is the chosen one to reverse this fate. When she's transported back to reality the immortal item drops and breaks. Jiwoo helps her escape at the cost of his life. Back at her sect, she informs her father and uncle, and they decide she has to travel to the past. She will have to destroy the evil bone before killing him. If she kills him rashly the demon god will be reborn. The father rushes out to slow down demon god while the uncle transports Susu. Before completely vanishing, Susu witnesses demon god killing everyone and vows to kill him. When she wakes up, she is in the body of Shiwu, the general's second daughter. She and her maid are being pursued by bandits, and she can't fight back trapped in a mortal body. Suddenly, a man who looks like Jiwu saves them. Shiwu runs to hug him but is bluntly rejected. Turns out this man is Prince Lin who has been shamelessly pursued by her but he is in love with her older sister. We also find out she is the one who hired the bandits to get close to Prince Lin. When Shi Wu gets back to the mansion she learns that she is actually married to Tan Tai Jin, the demon fetus, who is a captive prince from another kingdom not liked by anyone. Tan Tai Jin was punished to kneel on the snow by previous Shi Wu, for saving Shi Wu's sister instead of his wife. She tries to provoke him to see if he's evil. She gets scared and runs away when he looks at her the same as the demon god. Shiwu realizes that previous Shiwu was a cruel spoilt brat, while her sister Bing Chang is kind and gentle, loved by both Prince Lin and Tan Tai Jin. On the fourth day of his punishment, Shiwu pities Tan Tai Jin and checks on him. She gives him a cloak but he refuses. He passes out and Shiwu takes him to her room to warm him up. Whenever Tan Tai Jin is on the verge of death, the demon in his heart would appear. This time it tells him to keep on living to continue absorbing the resentment in the world. Shiwu doesn't know where the evil bone is, so she starts frisking him but gets caught when he regains consciousness. She finds out from the maid that previous Shiwu would whip Tan Tai Jin before sleeping, but now she can't do it because of her kindness. That night Tan Tai Jin catches a fever and Shiwu takes care of him. She wakes up at noon the next day and goes to meet her new family for the first time. She finds out that her whole family dotes on Shiwu. When Tan Tai Jin goes to the kitchen to get food, the workers make him wash dishes in ice water and give him filthy leftovers. Shiwu finds out and reprimands the workers, then takes Tan Tai Jin to another room and gives him a proper meal. He refuses due to mistrust. He tells her how they got married. She had planned to drug her sister and the fifth prince with an aphrodisiac, so that they could sleep together and she could have Prince Lin to herself. This plan backfires and she and Tan Tai Jin ended up taking it and spent the night together. To protect her honor, the general made them get married. Shi Wu is in disbelief and eats the food to prove it's not drugged. Then orders him to always come here to eat proper food. Meanwhile, the king of Sheng learns that the king of Jing, Tan Tai Jin's father, is about to die. He takes this chance to test Tan Tai Jin's ambition. Shiwu's maid tells her about the rumors that Tan Tai Jin can speak to animals, but she doesn't believe it and thinks he's just lonely. Shiwu thinks he becomes the demon god because of how badly he's treated. But if someone treats him well then maybe he won't be. Therefore, she buys him some winter clothes. However, Shiwu's older brother intentionally cuts it. Shiwu sees this and reprimands her brother. Tan Tai Jin is summoned to the palace by King Sheng. She will become suspicious and therefore follows him. 
Tan Tai Jin can see through King Sheng's ploy to pit him against his brother, so he says he doesn't want to fight for power but rather live a simple life. After Shi Wu arrives at the palace, she goes to investigate Tan Tai Jin's past. She finds that Nanny Yingsen, the woman who brought up Tan Tai Jin, has gone mad. The king's advisor plans to kill Tan Tai Jin because he refused to collude with him. Unfortunately for him, Tan Tai Jin kills him first by sending an insect. Prince Lin reports that people have been disappearing in their sleep. King Sheng orders Prince Lin's sect uncle, Yiji, to help figure this out. Upon returning home, Shi Wu learns about the disappearances and the advisor's death, and that Tan Tai Jin is a suspect. Therefore, Shi Wu frisks Tan Tai Jin but can't find anything suspicious on him. At night, Bing Chang is kidnapped by the dream demon because of her strong demonic aura. The next day, a crow tells Tan Tai Jin where the dream demon's captives are. However, at night he is kidnapped together with Shi Wu when she tries to save him. Fortunately, he had left some clues, which Prince Lin finds. Shi Wu and Tan Tai Jin wake up at the dream demon's lair. They find that Nanny Yingsen is also captured. Seeing that Shi Wu already knows her, he realizes she has investigated him. While trying to save Bing Chang, the mist knocks them out and they are transported into a dream. In the dream they see the life of Tan Tai Jin's mother. She is greatly favored by King Jing, but dies while giving birth, causing the king to hate Tan Tai Jin. Because of this Tan Tai Jin is sent to the cold palace with her two nannies, Lanan and Yingsen, who will have to fend for themselves. The dream demon pulls him out of this dream. She realizes that Tan Tai Jin can't dream because he has no love threads. But she finds his weakness and plunges him into a nightmare. She will witnesses Nanny Lanan saving Tan Tai Jin's life with her blood, and how Tan Tai Jin grows up in hardship while being bullied ceaselessly. When they run out of money, Nanny Lanan leaves to seek help from Yue tribe, Tan Tai Jin's maternal tribe. Later on he is given up to the Xing kingdom as a hostage prince for the sake of peace between their kingdoms. In the Xing palace, he still gets bullied by the fifth prince and his friends. It's only Prince Lin who stands up for him. Tan Tai Jin observes that everyone likes Prince Lin, so he starts copying everything he does hoping people will like him too. But the fifth prince still bullies him. Shi Wu figures out Tan Tai Jin likes Bing Chang just because Prince Lin also loves her. She also thinks it's not his fault he was born with the evil bone. Back to the dream, Nanny Yingsen receives a proposition from Tan Tai Jin's real brother, asking her to assassinate Tan Tai Jin. In return she'll go back to her tribe. Yingsen agrees and her dream ends, consequently waking Shi Wu. Shi Wu saves Tan Tai Jin before killing himself in his nightmare. When the dream demon returns to her lair, she finds Tan Tai Jin has destroyed her vines. In anger, she attacks him. The demon in Tan Tai Jin's heart tells him his blood can hurt demons. Influenced, he absorbs the dream demon to death. Finally, Prince Lin and sect Uncle Yiji arrive and rescue everyone. When they wake up in the general's mansion, Tan Tai Jin realizes he can use demon powers, and Shi Wu decides to treat Tan Tai Jin better after seeing his miserable life in the dream. He uses his new powers on the crow, and now he can see through the crow's eyes. Because of previous Shi Wu's cruelty to him, Tan Tai Jin wants to test this powers on her, but he sees the wound on her hand and remembers her saving him, changing his mind. When Bing Chang wakes up, she confesses her love to Prince Lin, and he promises to take action. He runs into Shi Wu and tells her to stop seeking him since he'll be marrying Bing Chang, and Shi Wu assures him. Tan Tai Jin who has been eavesdropping is shocked since previous Shi Wu was obsessed with Prince Lin. Then Shi Wu confesses to Prince Lin that she hates Tan Tai Jin and dreams of killing him, but can't allow him to die yet. Tan Tai Jin is hurt by this. General's Mansion receives news from King Sheng that Bing Chang is allowed to be Prince Lin's side concubine. The king decided this because he's afraid of the general's military power. Bing Chang is hurt by this and swears to be the main concubine. Tan Tai Jin plans to take revenge on everyone who wronged him during Prince Lin's wedding. During the ceremony, Tan Tai Jin disappears and sends crows to hurt his enemies, including Shi Wu. But he changes his mind and spares Shi Wu right before the crows attack her. Then he witnesses Shi Wu protecting her brother with a spell. Shi Wu looks for Tan Tai Jin and when she finds him draws her sword and charges at him. 
He thinks she's going to attack him but instead protects him from the crows. He's more confused with her kindness. Later he realizes his demon power is running low. He thinks if he cultivates he won't need to devour demons for power, so asks Shi Wu to teach him some spells. She accepts under the condition that he stays alive. Subscribe, like, comment, and share for more content like this. Bye.